Anthony calling in from Texas with a question specifically for Shannon. So welcome, Anthony. Uh oh. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. Hello. Hi. Hi. I was hoping you could give me some uh, perspective um, without giving you a long preamble. Uh, okay. I'm a lifelong atheist, I would say shorthand, just not religious originally until I understood things better. Uh, a few years ago, I worked at a state hospital, and I saw a lot of people with a lot of different types of um, mental disorders and fixed delusions and things of that nature, including some that were religious in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, what concerned me as a non-religious person is that I saw a lot of my coworkers doing things like praying with the delusional people, and some of their delusions, like I said, were religious in nature. Uh, okay. Where, in fact, like where they believed they were things like the Pope or they were other, you know, major religious figures, Jesus Christ, reborn, reincarnated and things of that nature. And it got me wondering, like, for, and it's, I'm not trying to say that every religious person is this way, but isn't it possible that if they believe in a literal figure that they can't prove as a fixed illusion wouldn't at least some religious people fall into that, even if they're not like diagnosed as such? Uh, that's a really, it's a good question, but it's very, very general, right? So if you're asking me, are there religious people who have delusions like in the world that are related to their religiosity, then the answer would un like undeniably be a, a yes. That would be likely the case that there's all kinds of people with undiagnosed delusional disorders who are who have a fixation on on religion as a component of that delusion um but that does not mean nor translate to that all religious people and being religious is in and of itself a delusion it doesn't fit the diagnostic criteria for delusion i did a whole video on this where i broke it down in great greater detail than i can here um but i just don't think that's the case yeah, you and me both on my atheist debates thing. I, I did a video about whether or not religion is a mental illness. It's not. Um, it's one of those things. I love the way you put that because um, there are plenty of mentally ill people um, who are religious. There are also plenty that are atheists. Mm -hmm. um, but I would have I would have very difficult time with any model that suggested merely being wrong about something or believing something that hasn't been justified rationally means that you're mentally ill because i would argue that well either we're all mentally ill uh which i'm not ruling out it's a possibility but <laughs> we're all wrong about stuff we've all believed stuff um and to be when you're talking about something like religions which are believed by the majority granted it's a vanishing it is a gradually vanishing majority but it's still believed by the majority it's very difficult to suggest that somebody needs to be mentally ill to profess a belief and because we can't know what's in somebody's mind there are plenty of people who would say they believe who maybe they don't believe or maybe they as dan dennett pointed out maybe they believe in belief they believe in the value of saying you know hey i believe for social reasons you know so i i think that just because let me put it to you this way. When do you think children are mentally ill when they believe in Santa Claus? Um, I would say uh, that magical thinking is part of growing up that naturally dissipates as, as you get older. You're also conditioned by people in a position of trust that that, that that's a reasonable belief and they orchestrate the environment around you to reinforce that belief, which is kind of what religions do, <laughs> which yeah. is why, why they're not, not even not necessarily delusions and most of the time are not. It's, it's a matter of conditioning. You're, you're taught how to interpret internal perceptions. And I, I speak a lot in that video I did about 
um, internal monologue interpretation. So we all have an internal monologue, right? That where we kind of, you know, have internal conversations with ourselves cognitively about day-to-day -day things, about important things. It tends to be focused on things that we're either stressed about or are important to us. Um, so when you look at people who believe that they're communicating with God, quite often they're not actually, they're, it's just a one-way line, but very often people are conditioned to misinterpret aspects of their internal monologue uh, to be the Holy Spirit. For example, when that's really just your internal monologue that you're now attributing to a different cause than your cognition. So that's a misattribution error. That's not mental illness. That's something that you're conditioned to interpret incorrectly. Um, it can lead to mental illness. Certainly, I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, glaze over that. It certainly can lead to mental illness in, in myriad conditions. But in, in and of itself, um, it's generally innocuous from a mental health standpoint, and is also kind of what would be expected based on the conditioning models that we see people who are raised in religious institutions uh, go through. And, and not to sidetrack this, but I think you said that everybody has an internal monologue. And I've recently been seeing discussions where people are pointing out that not everyone has an internal monologue. That's true. That is true. So, yeah, that is true. Most people, if I didn't yeah. qualify it with most people, then I should have. Illness to me. <laughs> Does that help clarify things? I mean, I guess it, it does, but it, it kind of just maybe to a certain extent also begs the question then mm -hmm. if, if you're saying like that their internal dialogue is mi being misattributed to something like the Holy Spirit, then mm -hmm. I mean, couldn't you also say a schizophrenic person is doing the same thing? And then why is that diagnosable as a mental illness while like belief in a literal Zeus or something isn't? It's a good question. Illusion? Yeah. Because it exists in gradients, right? So I also mentioned, I also said that this could lead to mental illness, right? So if you if you start to kind of disassociate with that internal monologue, and and see it as something unique, and and give it defined attributes, and it exists within you in a consistent state, then that's concerning. But a day to day person that is <laughs> that is you know just praying and maybe they have a thought in their head and then they attribute that thought to oh okay well this is maybe god talking to me and then they just move on that's just a normal thing that's going to happen based on conditioning so it has to do with the sim like how prevalent is the symptomology and how how is it affecting your life day to day too are you still able to function socially um is it a detriment to you are you not able to discern reality as a result of it all of those are important components and people i think tend to see it without the nuance and just in the black and white just that well if if, if you're if you're hitting this wrong and you're saying that oh, okay um that, that thought that I just had after I asked God about whether or not I should make a decision and me getting now focused in on that decision and having that conversation with myself about it is probably God interacting with me in my, in my, in my thoughts to tell me that this is the thing that I should do. I'm, I'm being moved by the spirit. That's a thing that that's a thing that happens that isn't like a huge detriment just on its face in isolation. If that starts to become a trend and you start to, attribute all of those thoughts and give those thoughts attributes and really assign agency outside of yourself to a subset of your own thoughts. And that becomes a mental illness. That is problematic. But you can't just look at any given person in any given moment and 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 say that they're mentally ill without going through the symptomology and seeing what it means in context and seeing yeah. how it has an impact or effect. It's just not that simple. And to and to try to make it that simple, it does a huge detriment to people who do have mental illness, kind of shields them from being able to be diagnosed when that is an issue, makes it this innocuous thing, and then turns it into a pejorative against people who do have mental illnesses as well. Um, and all of those things are things that I would rile against wholeheartedly. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I understand that. I, and I don't want to like use that as like a criteria. That, well, everyone with, that believes in this stuff is just crazy. I'm not, I'm not trying to dismiss people in that sense. It just, I guess what was most concerning is that these people with these delusions and I, and it seems from what you're saying that the biggest component is how detrimental it is to their lives. Um, I guess the scary part of it for me was the fact that they were reinforcing it. And it's like, this is, no, oh, that's not okay. <laughs> because 
Um, they yeah. think, and, and everyone was okay with it because Christianity's got the privileged position. Yeah, they, there can still be loads of problems, things that are worth objecting to and things that are worth fighting against, irrespective of whether there's a mental health issue involved or not. I tend to look at it more like I've seen some really incredible optical illusions, things where, uh, you, like, especially when it comes to color and how our perception of color changes based on the colors that are around them. So you can look at, you know, a cube and here's one that looks orange and one that looks brown and they're actually the same color, but you can't see it until you isolate them completely. To me, thinking those are two different colors is the normal jumping off point when you first see the picture. And when someone suggests to you that there's a... Fuck you, Johnny. Uh, when somebody suggests to you <laughs> that there's something wrong and that those are ex the same color, even though to you they completely feel like they're not, then you you either have an interest in demonstrating the truth of this or you don't. And once it's actually been demonstrated, if you then sit there and still say, no, those are two different colors, when we've shown conclusively these are the same color, that's where I start wondering what lines we may have crossed, but in the end, none of it is diagnostic. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't know what benefit you could get from saying some people who believe some things are mentally ill. Okay, big deal. So what? What's next? I mean, does it change how we address it? No. It doesn't change the argument. It just, uh, I guess it influenced my perspective because I, I've always felt like an outsider looking in, trying to understand how people could believe those things because it seems so, I mean, not to be derogatory towards religious people, but it just seems so ridiculous to me growing up. Yeah, it's understandable. An attempt, it. Yeah, but an attempt to explain how other people um, process thoughts and the perspective that other people have uh, being different from yours isn't to assign it uh, that it's a mental illness. That it's just that people having differing belief systems is just the human condition, right? So Absolutely. just ma it, maybe it push your thinking a little bit more away from that because there people could have what they see as fully justified reasons, even though they're poor, to believe something. Um, that doesn't mean they're mentally ill. That just means that they're human. <laughs> that's that's all that means. L last note on this, Anthony, based on something you said about how because of who you've interacted with and your life experience, it changes your perception of this stuff. Um, go back to that same uh, optical illusion and use that as a metaphor, because what you're doing is you're saying, based on the colors around me, I feel like this person here is a different color. And when you look at it, you'll see that they are not uh, as different as you might imagine, and that it is the things that surround you and the things that surround them that help color this. And it's, it's really difficult to like judge somebody else's life. Um, and which is why I don't, you know, when we're on here on the show, it's, you know, tell me what you believe in why. And I point out why the arguments fail, why the evidence isn't evidence, not that the person is deluded, uh, or, you know, especially ridiculous yeah well i i run a skeptics group in kerrville and i do run into cool. a lot of people that have been uh, traumatized and indoctrinated throughout their lives but it's absolutely really hard to get through to them <laughs> awesome yeah. well we appreciate the call anthony i got to get on to some other callers like a lot of callers waiting to talk I to a ton thanks anthony <laughs> other callers thanks anthony